Hello and welcome to another engineering video. This video is another video on circuit simulation. This time though is using a product called P-Spice. And I'm sorry, P-Spice is the old version that I used to use uh, way back. This is actually Q-Spice. It's, it's put out now by a company called Corvo. Um, Spice is sort of an older open source circuit analysis engine that various people have, have sort of come up with different flavors of over the years, they call it. Um, QSpice is one of the latest. And it's sort of in circuit simulation, at least for my uses and the uses that I use for my students and whatnot, it sort of picks up um, at a level of difficulty or level, I should say, level of complexity above where we can get with Tinkercad. So Tinkercad is good for some basic circuits and it's perfectly fine. Um, but for a, an added level of sort of complicated circuits as well as um, frankly, it, it just looking more professional in a in a report, a, a sort of a formal publication type thing, um, QSpice is where to go because this is ultimately going to give us a a diagram and a simulation that looks way more professional than the sort of cartoony um, Tinkercad thing. So getting started. So I've obviously I've got the thing installed and running and, and, you know, I'm, I'm fairly familiar with some of the basics anyway. Again, I'm, I'm a mechanical engineer by nature, but for, for basic simulations and stuff, this thing is awesome. So I've got this sort of the same circuit in front of me that I'm referencing that I used in the um, Tinkercad uh tutorial or guide or or how to so i it's a it's a simple series resistive circuit four resistors 5 12 7 and 6 ohms with a 10 volt supply so first thing i want to drop in is i want to find in my symbols list over on the left we've got built-in symbols down in the v there's an independent voltage source and if we look down at the bottom it'll sort of show us and give us an idea the thing that that can be sort of frightening um, I can't really get rid of that annotate uh, thing. That's part of Zoom, I think. But um, can I drag it? Oh, I look at that. I can drag it out of the way. I don't even know if that shows up on my on my screen or, or on my web share. Anyway, enough stream of consciousness for one video, right? So these different independent voltage sources, they're all sort of named the same thing. But the, the, the diagram down here sort of gives us an idea of what they're going to look like when we drop them into the circuit schematic. So the one I'm on right now is a sine wave, DC offset, offset, amplitude and frequency. This has got some other settings. I don't even know what all that means. The, the, I mean, for a sine wave, usually it's going to be kind of this guy, right? Uh, so independent voltage source, this is, you know, another complex, but a simple DC, right? Voltage source, V and a value. So I'm going to grab this guy. I'm going to click and drag it in and drop. So it's a voltage, a DC source, not a sine wave. It's a DC source V1 with a value. I can type in my 10, oops, double click, sorry, and type in my 10. I don't even need the volts. It's smart enough to know I'm talking in volts. Um, in fact, most of these symbols, if not all of them, are set up to use sort of the primary units. So if we get down into like milliamps or, uh, you know, microfarads and things, most of these are set up to use the, the the full units rather than microfarads. We'd use full farads or um, for micro, it's smart enough. So like I would put a for micro, it uses a U. Whoops. Oh, don't overwrite a U. So in this case, since it's a voltage source, 10 U would be notice it switched to the Greek letter. That's 10 micro volts. Now, I don't want that. I want 10 volts, but that's how we would get. And we could do the same with a little M for milli. Uh, a K for kilo, that kind of thing. But this circuit, everything is just in ohms and volts. So I'm going to leave it that way. Got my voltage source. I'm going to grab over an R, a resistor. The only thing's in the R, right? USA style. I don't even know. UK should be a Q, but it is. I don't want to use that. We're going to stick with the US style. Drag this in. I'm going to orient it with a 90 degree rotation. I'm just going to control C and control V because my R2 is going to be over here somewhere. Paste it again for R3, change that back to no rotation, and then paste another one in for R4. All right, uh, and then double click my value. I've got five ohms, 12 ohms, seven ohms, 
and six ohms. So those are all my values. Now to complete this circuit, I can right click and I need to start drawing wire. So draw a wire and I'm gonna go and it only allows me, I'm gonna I'm click this sort of top post on the power supply. It, it won't allow me to sort of draw, uh, it doesn't automatically corner is the wording I'm looking for. So I'm gonna use my cursor, it's sort of the plus sign to line up the height and then just click and keep dragging. Select this resistor, connect it to this one over here, line that up and then come down and just sort of click and draw this wire all the way around. So here and here. Now, the thing about QSpice is that to run a simulation, it absolutely requires a ground. Now, in reality, not all circuits are grounded. Um, but as far as this software is concerned, it is using the ground as its reference for where zero volts is. So every circuit in here has to have a ground. Um, so I'm actually going to click this corner because ground in a DC circuit, if we were to ground this, would usually be on the negative side of the supply. So I'm going to grab this little corner, just drag down, escape to get out of that. And if I right click, I can place a ground. So... There, I, I now have a ground. I could also do something really fancy. Um, maybe not. Selection gets a little iffy, by the way, if you haven't noticed, selecting and deleting. So I could get fancy, draw wire. I could do this and draw a wire and do this. I don't know if this is fancy or just pretentious, but it could be done this way. So place a ground here and place a ground here electrically that's the same thing right whether i draw this wire connecting here and draw one ground or draw the ground in two different spots so electrically the same thing it doesn't really make a difference but we'll stick with this method just for clarity now one other thing so this uh, software is going to run a simulation and generally speaking i want to drop labels at the places where i want to take measurements um, I don't even know, honestly, if I can run a simulation without said labels. So I'm going to try that, you know, even more stream of consciousness. Look at me go. So to get a simulation running, um, at least when it comes to DC, which this is, uh, we don't have a whole lot going on, right? It, time doesn't matter like it does in AC. We don't need a time factor for a simulation. Um, so the simplest way to get a DC simulation running is to just click somewhere, I don't have anything selected, and I'm just gonna type in dot zero P. So dot op really, and dot tells it this is a command. And I can now click this and, and you know move it wherever I want. It doesn't really matter. Um, it helps, by the way, when we're reporting out sort of these simulation things in a formal report, lab report, you know, something I plan on publishing. Whatever it may be, I, I always make sure that in the sort of screenshot of the circuit, I include these commands because some of these simulations get so tricky. There's a whole like, you know, there could be 15, 20 of these commands down here doing different things. Um, but op for DC is the simplest. And I'm actually going to test it because I've never tested op without first defining where I want to take measurements. So to start the simulation up here is the power button. That's just the run button. So it runs, it shrunk everything down. Let's get rid of some stuff on my screen. Oh, hey, look at you previewing some other circuits I was working on as well as some LaTeX code. There we go. So it, whoops, that one I didn't want to shrink. So we've got sort of our... Um, this would be the results window and, and QSpice particularly, it's missing a feature that sort of a lot of people have asked for where it, it, it we, including me, so a lot of users, including me, would like it to be able to put the results right on the picture, just like in the Tinkercad demo where it had the multimeters um, sort of showing the values and you could just drop that screenshot right in your report. QSpice doesn't do that. Um, we can't drop the values right on the diagram. Um, the way it typically reports out its results is on a graph. And that's basically what this screen is that popped up. So I'm going to click here. Will it work without labels? It may. There we go. So if I start clicking wire, so the wire between R1 and R2, the wire, you'll notice in the sort of the background, that graph populating, right? So I've now clicked 
three places I get three different lines. There's a problem because I didn't first label my nodes and the nodes, if I ho hover my mouse, then I can get a value because the simulation has a run. Um, and, and Spice knows, QSpice knows that this is NO2. But if I were to put this graph sort of in my report, there is no way to know sort of what NO2 is, right? It doesn't show up on this view anywhere. I'd have to take a screenshot with my mouse here and with my mouse here. So it is better to do what I was going to do in the first place and label these ahead of time. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to label it. And that will drop it right on here so that when I use this screenshot, the ends show up, um, right? And I can even label here. Well, I guess I don't need to label there because it's labeled already as a ground, so zero volts. And is this one labeled? What if I label that one? NO7. Okay. So now if I run my simulation, the graph window pops up. I go back and I, I sort of click these wires and just click them all. Now I could use this graph and 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 throw this graph directly in my report. Um, and, and along with this screenshot, and, and then we have a reference now of where uh, where sort of these values are coming from. So if I highlight here, you're right, NO2 is 8.33 volts, and it's telling me the blue line. And they're, notice they're not necessarily in order, right? VNO7 is not this two volt line. VNO7 is the bright green, so the color is what matters. Um, but that's that's one one way we could do this. The the other way, this is a I mean this is a DC circuit resistive only, right? No inductors, no capacitors, no switches, no nothing. So time doesn't matter. These values will be forever. One thing I can do is I can go to file and export data, and I get a text file that has those values in it. So rather than use the graph, especially for a simple DC circuit, now for AC, absolutely use the graph because time matters, right? This thing will be a sine wave of some sort, right? Maybe we can measure phase angles and all that stuff. Um, but for DC, these values are permanent. So I can just, you know, export these, get this text file. It spits out all of my values. And if you look back to um, the, the Tinkercad video, You'll notice that a lot of these values are the same, which is a good thing, these voltages and these um, these currents especially. One thing to note, remember that SPICE, when it does its math, is not necessarily calculating a voltage drop across R3. So the voltage here at N06 is 2 volts, right? That 2 volts is in reference to 0, which is the ground. So the drop across R4 is 2 Right, it's zero on one side, two on the other. That's a voltage drop of two. The voltage drop across R three is not four point three three. This is measuring four point three three to zero to ground. So four point three three is R three and R four together. We need to subtract the R four, the two volts from the four point three three. So the drop across R3 should be 2.33. Same with this wire, this node voltage, right? 8.33 is not the drop across R2. That's the drop across R2, 3, and 4, all the way, all the way back around the horn back to zero. So we need to subtract our 4.33 and our 2, so 6.33. So that should be, what, 2.33 um, back to zero. That would be the drop across R2 only, right? And then we can sort of subtract the other way, right, we, for, for R1, because we have 10 volts to ground, right? 10 volts, 0 volts. We've got 8.33 here, so the 1.67 that's left has got to be the drop across R1. So there's a bit of math involved in getting these. These are not the voltage drops across the resistor. They are the voltage drop across all the resistors all the way back to ground. So sort of an important uh, an important distinction there. But anyway, as far as a, a simple circuit schematic, simple simulation, um, hopefully that helped. It, it can get more complicated from there. And, and I mean, frankly, even, even more complicated DC circuits don't get much more complicated.
Um, and in fact, the only difference really when we're doing AC is the, the power supply obviously needs to be different. And, and we can follow the directions when we use the AC voltage source, right? Sine wave, DC offset, amplitude of the voltage. So DC offset, I mean, it's typically zero unless we're, in, we're injecting DC for some reason. Uh, amplitude, you know, 120 volts, 60 hertz if we want this thing to be a wall outlet. So 100, so zero, 120, 60 would give us, you know, a wall outlet right? and we can change it from there. Um, and then it, there's a little more complication to this op. Op doesn't quite work. We need a different instruction that includes a time factor, but we can, we can get into that in, in future videos. So again, hopefully that was helpful. Again, slightly more professional looking uh, way than Tinkercad to sort of get a simulation done and get it in a, in a publishable format. So thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you in a future engineering video.